to the IT department. She is our business analyst. And she has worked on our website a little bit. And I'm going to turn this over to Sade and let her uh, show you what she's been doing. Thank you, Peter. Good morning to everybody. I just want to take a moment to do a quick demo and walk through the employee access site. And that's really where you're going to see the wellness program and our well points details. So from the main site up here, I'm just going to walk through if you'll just follow along. Um, the employee access site, there's a link at the top right corner up here. I'm going to click on. So that's just from the main page. So you should be able to go right to that link there. Um, and then there's a login to employee access. This is the area where you'll have to enter a uh, email and password. There's a generic email and password for everybody that is a City of Hendersonville employee in this area, and it is. The email is employee, oh, Charday. Okay, the, <laughs> the email is employee. If I can type. Okay, we have it. I thought I thought we could say it out loud, but maybe not. Okay. Everybody does have access does have this email and password. If you're not sure what it is, please check with one of us. We'll, we'll let you know. So this is the area where you'll log in. The first thing that comes up is the My Dashboard. And what I just want you to remember about this first page that pops up is Think Employee Access, Employee Access, because that's the main page that you need to go to. Okay, so this is kind of our updated employee access page that you see here. Here you should, it should really be a one-stop shop for everything related to um, your employment here. All the information, benefit information is here. There's a separate link. Um, there's a link to the WellPoints program and calendar. And I want to uh, point out the WellPoints program page. This is a new page that we created. Um, it offers everything that you would need to know about this uh, this year's WellPoints program. There's the manual that's right there at the top. Also the tally sheet, that's very important. You'll need that at the end of the program. Um, and probably most importantly are the wellness classes and events and you can filter to like the next 30 days or you can look at all of them here of course today's um, event get to know your credit score is here so just I just want everybody to be aware that this is an option and that this is here the last thing I want to point out before I step away is that these pages open on a separate tab so if you ever need to get back to the main employee access um, page if you'll notice up here, it opened the WellPoints Reward Program in a different tab, so you can easily just go back to Employee Access. So this is here and available um, for everyone, for all our city employees. If Again, if you need um, the access, the password, please, please just let us know. And if you have any other questions, let myself or somebody in IT or HR know. Okay, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Charnay. Thank you, Charnay. Thank you. Let's give Charday a round of applause for a <laughs> If you need to know the password, you can come by and see myself or Kelly or Chris. We'll tell you what the password is, or, or Charday or, or Mary Beth. Or email. Read your email. <laughs> what? Read your email, too. Read, read your email. <laughs> read your email, okay. All right, I'm going to turn, turn the meeting over now to. Uh, Right now we're going to do just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, at the beginning of each of these wellness classes, because our speakers are giving us a lot of their time and knowledge at no cost to us, we are going to ask that we show um, a little bit of attention for them and courtesy. We're going to ask that all cell phones be silenced and give your undivided attention to the speakers when they are here. Also, I have got um, tally sheets and program books that I have made some extra copies for up front for those individuals that do not have email access, particularly roads and uh, parks maintenance people. Feel free to take those to have for your use if needed. 
couple of other things I wanted to talk about is Mayor Cleary has again given us the approval to go with the focus day option. Right now, uh, the way that works is if you go with three or four of the events and participate in those, you will qualify for those. We're knocking on the door of our first one, which is our HRA events. Those are going to be on October 1st or 2nd here at City Hall, October 3rd at the PD Annex. We are taking sign-ups for those now. You can also get a flu shot at the same time at these events. The second event that you can participate in if you choose to do so is our Catered Employee Appreciation Luncheon and Health Fair. And you will be required to speak with eight vendors in order to qualify for that. This, this event is going to be on November the 15th at the Hendersonville Public Library this year. We will again be hosting a blood drive in conjunction with the American Red Cross. The date for that will be November 22nd here at City Hall. More information will be coming about the sign-ups. We don't have that information yet for the um, Red Cross, but just be watching for that. The fourth event that you can participate in is donating a minimum of 10 pounds of non-perishable food to help fill the pantries of the VFW and Samaritan Center. We collected quite a bit of food next year. I encourage everybody to try to dig deeper and give a little bit more this year. We did back our date up a little bit till November the 22nd. That will help capture Thanksgiving and Christmas. Again, we'll be sending out more details about their specific pantry needs closer to the date of those events. Today's luncheon is um, provided by Regions Bank. Our guest speakers I'm going to begin introducing now. We have Ed Stansberry, who has been with Regions Bank for 15 years and has served as a branch manager at the Glenbrook location for eight years. He has more than 30 years of banking and financial management experience. He currently resides in Greenbrier, but he still thinks of Hendersonville as his home. Ed has a bachelor's degree in business administration from MTSU. Ed loves building long-term relationships with his clients to help them reach their financial goals. Paula Jarvis, who serves as the bank manager for Regions Bank, currently manages the Hendersonville branch. She both lives and works in Sumner County. She has more than 19 years of banking and relationship management experience, and 10 of those years are with Regions. She has held every position within the bank, ranging from cash associate to branch manager. Paula has a bachelor's degree in journalism from the University of Memphis. She is passionate about financial education and truly loves bringing her banking knowledge to the community. Today they're going to speak to us about your credit report. I would strongly urge and suggest everybody pay particularly close attention to what they do say. Check your reports often. I for one had something come up on my credit report and it took me a long time to get rid of it. And it is devastating and it will just turn your life around and trying to go through the process of doing it. And if you don't check it, it can do you a lot of harm. We check ours often, so fortunately we caught it early. But even with catching it, it took us a long time to get it resolved. So, Paul and Ed, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I'm just going to mic up here. How's everyone doing? Good. So I'm glad y'all could be here. All right. <laughs> all right does that sound does that sound all right can y'all hear me all right yes mm -hmm. all right so thank y'all so much for attending our lunch and learn today um like shelly said we're going to be talking about your credit report i want to first and foremost thank the city of hendersonville for allowing us to be here with you and share this important information with you also many many thanks to shelly for her hard work helping to coordinate this event now this presentation is going to be a little unique in that we are going to have two different audiences. We're going to have the live audience that we see here today, but we are also going to have a videotaped portion of this because we understand as community workers, you know, some can't be here today and we feel like this information is important enough that we want to make sure everyone that works for the city of Hendersonville is getting that. So our ask is take great notes. And also, if you have questions, we won't really be able to answer them during the presentation because of the uniqueness of live and, and video. But jot those questions down, and Ed and I will be around after the seminar to talk to you. Or if you have to get back to work, that's perfectly fine. We've got Donna, Medina, and Diane Spencer in the back. Wave. Hello. 
if you will, um, just jot your questions down and you can give those to them. So let's talk a little bit about the folder that we've got in front of us. So on, in this folder you're going to have some important information. First and foremost, you are going to have contact information for myself and Ed so that you can reach out to us. You've got our email addresses, our addresses, and our phone numbers. Secondly, I want to go over this form that you'll see on your left-hand side, and it says gain the financial knowledge to move your life forward. One of the things about Regions Bank is we are very, very passionate about financial education. It's, it's in our DNA. We believe in it wholeheartedly. So this is all the different resources that Regions offers, and you don't have to be a customer with us. So if you go to the www.regions.com website, there are all kinds of different articles and videos, and they range from financing your, uh, your child's higher education, auto loans, hardships. You hear me? That need to be lower? Okay. Bear with me, y'all. I have never been mic'd up like this before, so... Is it better? It's, is it good? Okay. All right. Um, also, interactive calculators. We have over 50 different calculators at Regents. So we like to say there is a calculator for that. If you want to be a millionaire one day and retire, then we've got a calculator to show you how to achieve that. All right. Next, you will see the financial wellness assessment. This is on the right-hand side. This shows four different topics that Regions feels like everyone should be familiar with and have an action plan. There are four major financial categories. And this form is really to get you thinking today. So, you know, pay close attention to this. If you can't fill it out tonight or today, you know, get home tonight and look at it because it's very, very important. And last but not least, we have... Am I getting close to something? Can I move over? Is this even off? It will. Okay. All right. And last but not least, you have a flyer that kind of goes over the whole presentation. And we'll reference this handout from time to time. So you have that in there as well. All right. Up. Am I ringing it? All right. All right. Is the clicker causing it? Okay. All right. Good to good to know. Nope. nope. <laughs> All right. Can I move the podium back? No, no, I can't. Okay. All right. Can we just use this mic? Okay. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to be like nails on a chalkboard here. So, hey. All right. All right. All right. Thanks. Some technical difficulties there, but we we worked through it. Let me get my clicker here. Thank you. Okay. So this information is general in nature and is not intended to be legal, tax, or financial advice. Although Regions believes this information to be accurate, it cannot ensure that it will remain up to date. Statements or opinions of individuals referenced herein are their own, not Regions. Consult an appropriate professional concerning your specific situation and IRS.gov for current tax rules. All right. So what are we going to learn today? Today we're going to focus on three major questions. We're going to talk about what is a credit report and what is a FICO score and how are they different. How does my credit report and FICO score affect my finances? And we'll learn that they really do affect your finances. And how can I maintain or improve my credit score? All right. So informing yourself. What is, what is in a credit report? And this is just kind of a rhetorical question. Mainly your information about you, past loans. past loans, accounts, inquiries, seeing who has checked your credit in the past. 
any derogatory comments like collection items, foreclosures, things like that, they can be on your credit report as well. So when we talk about lenders and we talk about credit reports, most people think of loans. They think of getting a loan, getting a mortgage, getting a car loan. So as lenders, we look at four different C's. So we break them down. We look at capacity, which is, is really your paycheck. It's your ability to pay back a loan. It's what you've got coming in, whether it be your paycheck, whether it be Social Security, whether it be um, you know, disability, your capacity to pay back. And then we look at the capital. And I like that the piggy bank stands out there because your capital is really what you own, what you have. So I'm sure everyone's heard the term net worth. You know, what is, what is your net worth? Your net worth is just as simple as all the things that you own put together, and then you take all the debts that you have and you add those. And the difference becomes your net worth. So you'll hear some people have a positive net worth, some people have a negative net worth. Collateral. That is essentially what you are putting up for a loan. So you'll hear about you know, car loans, and a lot of people have car loans. Car loan is just simply you're using that car as collateral. So the bank has something or the lender has something that they can come back and, you know, if you don't pay, do they have a recourse there? So we talk about collateral. We also have unsecured loans, and I'm sure everyone's heard of that. You know, a lot of times a credit card. A credit card's a great example of an unsecured type of credit. So when we look at rates for those two, I mean, obviously, what would, what would be usually the lower rate? The, the secured loan or the unsecured? Secured. Secured, because you've got, you've got a little skin in the game there. All right. And then we talk about the last thing, which is character. And I think this is one of the most important elements of the four C's of credit. And character is really going to be defined and looked at and what is on your credit report. And I like to ask people, why in the world do we study history? Why do we study history? It's, it's way past there. Why, why? We study history because history has a tendency to repeat itself. We study history because we learn from our mistakes. We learn from lessons. So I like to think of your credit report as essentially your history. And that's what a lender will look at. They'll look at what have you done in the past. <clears throat> All right, so three major credit reporting agencies out there. And I want you to refer to your handout now because this is a good time. And do you need that handout? Thank you. Now's a good time to go over this. I know Shelly referenced this in the very beginning, and I appreciate you referencing that, Shelly, because that is super important to look at your credit report. Do you know that everyone in this room has access to their credit report on an annual basis, and it's absolutely free? And the, the way and how you get that is right there on the top part of that handout, requesting your annual credit report. So we have three major credit bureaus. You can get one credit report from each of those bureaus. Now, what we like to recommend is to stagger it a little bit. So every four months, you know, four months, get your Equifax. Another four months goes by, get your Experian. Another four months, get your TransUnion. So therefore, you are continuously looking at your credit for the rest of the year. Now, that's not going to provide your FICO score. That, usually, you have to pay a little extra for. But what it does is it provides who's looked at your credit, what accounts you have out there. And obviously, if you see something that's not yours, that gets you started even quicker cleaning it up. All right? So all of that information is there. I recommend that if you have not done this, this is a great takeaway from today. This is a great takeaway to go home and do. So getting back with the three major credit reporting agencies, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. And a lot of people ask me, you know, what in the world do these agencies do, Paula? I mean, what, what are they? They are just collectors of information. They're just big warehouses of information. And I'll use regions as an example. If you have a loan, every month we are reporting, did you pay your loan? Were you late? Were you on time? We're taking that information and we are sending it to those major credit reporting agencies along with every other lender. And that's how they are compiling your credit history. Now, everybody you know, depending on the bank, they, they may pull a different one. So I think it's always important to, to tell people your credit score can actually vary between all three credit bureaus. And why is that? I'll tell you why. So if, for example, you go to the doctor and you don't pay your medical bill, that medical office 
has to report you to collections, and it costs money to do that. It costs money to send it to each credit bureau. So I may only report you to Equifax. So therefore, if someone else pulls your transunion, it might not be on there. So it can vary depending on the agency that they pull. Now, with mortgage, I think that's important to note. Mortgage is a little different. You will never have a truer credit score than when you pull for a mortgage because a mortgage is going to take all three credit bureaus and it's going to take a blend of them and it's going to give you that score, that one true score. And if you think about it, that makes sense because what's the largest loan most people are ever going to get in their life? It's probably their mortgage. So credit reporting agencies, the three. So what's in a credit report? And I know Ed is going to cover this in detail here in just a few minutes, but um, you're going to have the identifying information, who you are, your name, your social, your date of birth, things like that. And you're also going to have um, any trade lines or accounts that you have, like if you have a credit card with Citibank, it's going to show that, you know, do you own it singly or jointly. It's going to show any derogatory, like have you had a collection item, a bankruptcy, and then it's also going to show who has looked at your credit report. So I think it's important, though, where a lot of confusion lies is not necessarily what's in a credit report. A lot of the confusion lies in what's not. What is not in a credit report? Oops, I had an oops on my account, and I have an overdraft. It's not going to be on your credit report. I'm a terrible driver, and I've got like eight tickets. Now I'm going to show up on your, driver, uh, on your credit report. Um, my income. It's going to show you where I work, but it's not going to show you how much I make. Health information, anything like that's not going to show up on a credit bureau. Now, I get questions a lot, and particularly from my younger customers that come in and they say, Paula, I'm, I, need, I need a credit card. And I'll ask, you know, what, what experience do you have with credit? Oh, my goodness, I pay my cell phone bill every single month. Paula, I have got credit. And my answer to that is, if you pay your cell phone every month, it's great, it's wonderful, but that's not going to report to your credit bureau. Neither is paying your rent on time. But now here's the flip side of it. If you do not pay your cell phone bill and you do not pay your rent, they can actually put in for a collection item on you and that is going to adversely affect your credit. So you kind of get one side of that. And I know that doesn't sound fair, but, but that's just the truth of it. All right, so we've talked about kind of what's not in a credit report. Who uses credit reports? Obviously lenders. That's going to be your first person you're going to think of because they're going to look at your history, your character. Jobs. A lot of employers look at credit now because that kind of shows you know, your ability to manage money. You better believe when I applied for Regions Bank, they looked at my credit because if I'm going to be out here and I'm going to be advising you on your finances, they want to make sure that I can handle my own. But a lot of companies nowadays, that's, that's a big trend, is looking at the credit report. For housing, rental applications, mortgages. My son just started University of Tennessee at Knoxville, and he got an apartment. Well, he has no credit. So guess who signed with him? Mom. Mom signed with him, absolutely. So if he skips out, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm on the hook for it. To obtain insurance. And I think this is something that a lot of people don't realize, is the power of good credit because it can really save you money. You know, when you look at buying insurance, they look at your credit score because that does represent kind of character. So it can save you money on your car insurance, your home insurance. Um, it can save you money on loans. Obviously, the better your credit score is, the less you're going to pay in interest over time. Mm -hmm. And when we're talking about a mortgage, a 30-year mortgage, and even just a half a percent, we're talking about a whole lot of extra money in your pocket. So it's really important to understand that importance. All right, so how much of a credit risk are you? Now, there are several different and varying scales, but this just kind of gives you an idea. Different lenders use different scales, so you can see them you know, going up, I think, sometimes to 900. But we're just using just one today that's, that's just kind of a generic one. But we'll see where, where you are in that range. For most people, OK to fair is usually around high sixes, mid seven, somewhere in there. 850 on this scale is, is excellent, is the best that you can get. Now, I tell people I have been in the banking business since 1994, and I have seen a whole lot of credit. I could probably count on maybe one, two hands max, an 850. I mean, you just don't see it very often. 
it comes with a lot of dedication and a whole lot of time to achieve that. But still, I mean, if we're looking at the excellent and very good, I mean, very good is, is right there. So, you know, just be mindful. When you look and if you pull your credit report and, and pull your credit score, just be mindful of where you are. All right. So, I like to call this the credit donut. This just kind of tells what determines your credit score. And we get this question a lot, you know, what is the specific, Paula, what's specifically, how do I determine my credit score? You know, let's put pen and paper together and see. I don't have the answer to that. But what I do know is I know what consists and makes up of it. So if you look at past payment history, that's going to be the biggest part of your credit score, 35%. So when we're looking at that, that's going to be how have you paid your bills on time? You know, do you have any late payments, anything like that? 35%, the biggest change that you can make is paying your bills on time. So if you're looking to improve, that is the best way to do it. Then we look at outstanding debt, 30%. So that's the next largest category. A lot of bankers, and I'm going to use a, a bank word here, a lot of bankers like to call it utilization. So what is utilization? It is essentially the amount of debt that you have. Um, so say for example you have a credit card and you got a credit card and it's got a limit of $10,000. So everybody knows just because you got a credit card with a limit of $10,000 does it mean you have to use all of it. <laughs> it's out there but you don't have to use all of it. So when we look at utilization if you take a $10,000 credit card and you have $3,000 on it that's about a 30 percent utilization. That's kind of the magic number right there that bankers look at is about 30%. We like to see that. Because if you have five credit cards and they've all got $10,000 limit and all of them are at $9,000 plus, what is, that, what is that showing us? Showing us that you know, you're, you're maxing everything out to where if you have one that has a higher limit but you have the discipline to keep it lower, that's where it's going to affect your credit positively. Okay. Next, we're going to look at length of credit history. So this is the amount of time that you've had a, a credit card. This is the one I get a lot with, Paula, I have got so many credit cards. Oh my goodness, let's line up all these credit cards and which one am I going to get rid of? And my first question to them is always this, which one have you had the longest? Well, this is the one I've had the longest. Well, this is the one you probably need to keep first. So. I have had a credit card since 1992. When I went to the University of Memphis, my parents said, you need a little credit card. You need to start establishing your credit. That will be the last credit card I will ever close because for me, that's 1992. That's showing that length of time that I've had credit. So it's really important. Then outstanding debt. It's looking at the amount of debt that you have. And past, uh, excuse me, and then new applications for credit. That's your inquiries. That's who's looked at your credit um, bureau lately. You know, how, many, how many times have you applied for credit? And then we look at types of credit, you know, whether they're what we call revolving or installment. And revolving is just simply like a line of credit or a credit card. It's where you've got a certain amount that you can use, but you don't have to use it all. And then an installment loan, think about like a car loan or a mortgage where you get a certain amount, you're paying it off every single month, principal and interest, until it's down to zero. All right, so I am going to turn it over to my friend Ed, but while we're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and have you pull up this handout because he's going to go over some really good tips in a minute on how to build and re repair credit, and there are a lot of information on this. All right? Thank you. Yeah. Remember the clicker. Thank you, Paula. Again, I'm Ed Stansberry, the branch manager for Regions Bank at the Glenbrook office on the other side of town. So uh, Paul, Paul and Dave focused on your credit score and different models they use to judge your score. Uh, she also talked about five components of your credit score. So now we're going to focus on how to read your credit report. And then some tips, valuable tips on how to repair your credit and maintain good credit score if you already have a good credit score. So most of what I'm going to be going over is on your handout right here. And I'm going to start with take charge of your credit. Nope, sorry. Your credit report right here. Obtaining and reading your credit report. I know we've gone over this a few times, but I want to emphasize again, it's probably one of the most important things you can do if you haven't done it yet. And go to annualcreditreport.com 
It's the one the government they set up for people to pull their free credit report and pull your credit report if you haven't done so in the last year. Um, you can also go to the other three listed on the right-hand side. You'll have to pay, but that one includes your FICO score if you do want to include your FICO score, if you need it for any reason or you just want to see what it is. Also on their websites, and there's other, also, other websites, you can freeze your credit. There's a, it would help if you're worried about identity theft, uh, which is happening, it seems, more and more these days with all the information floating around out there. So once you obtain your credit report, you'll uh, be, how do you read your credit report? Well, you'll start with identifying information. This will list your name, your address, your phone number, date of birth, social security number, and your employer information, and probably your past two or three places you've worked. Next is your account information. This is the name of the creditors you have, your account number or a portion of your account number, the type of credit it is, like revolving, installment, is it an auto loan, uh, all the account holders, it is a account you did with somebody else, like a mortgage, or is an individual account. Um, the total amount of your loan, if it's an installment loan, and the credit limit and highest balance, if it's a credit card, they're a little bit different. Um, the current amount owed, whether it's a fixed monthly payment and what that amount is, or a minimum payment, it'll change monthly on a credit card depending on how you're paying it down. And then your account status. Is it open account? Is it a closed account? Or is it inactive currently? And then probably the most important part is how well have you paid it, whether good or bad. So next, there's a, a couple things under public records. There's public records and there's collections. So public records are things found uh, from the court system or in the public records, such as bankruptcy records, tax liens, judgments, overdue child support, and then you have collections. And collections are items that have been referred to a collection agency for, for them to collect it. Like if you've not paid your loan, they're gonna, the lender's gonna send it over and try to get them to collect it. Uh, medical bills might be in here that you've missed on or sometimes you don't even know you had them. We have lots of clients come in and we'll pull up their credit report and we'll find three medical bills on there. And they're like, I don't, you know, they have no idea that they're on there. So that's another good reason to pull your credit report yearly to see what's on there. So we help them or they find out. A lot of times you can just type it in the, type it in the internet, the name of the company, and they'll pull up a phone number. You can call them and find out. A lot of times it could be a mistake. So not a lot of times, but there has been occasion. Uh, they do get uh, Social Security's mixed up sometimes. Your, yours might be one digit off from somebody else's. Or your name might be similar to somebody else's and they've got the wrong person. If you find a mistake in this area, um, what you can do is write a letter to the credit bureau and dispute this, this information and ask them to remove it. Okay, next are the inquiries. This is where the list, the, uh, companies that have pulled your credit report the last 24 months. Uh, it's important here to check this thoroughly once you get your credit report. Make sure all the companies listed are somebody you've had pull your credit. If they haven't, you need to contact them and find out, hey, why did you pull my credit? You know, maybe just something you forgot. And this is a good early warning sign of identity theft. I mean, if you see something on there, hey, uh, this company pulled my credit report, and you call them and say, well, you, pulled, you did this last year, and it's like, I don't remember, that's a good time to maybe freeze your credit, you know, do some more digging with that company to find out what's going on. All right, so now we're gonna go over some tips on how to repair your credit and improve your FICO score. And these are on the other side of the handout. Under the thing I originally said, take charge of your credit. So up at the top, what are the three most important things you can do right now to improve your credit or maintain your good credit? Because if you have good credit, you need to maintain it. So the first thing, as we've said a couple times already, check your credit report. And what are you going to do once you get your credit report? Uh, 
I would make sure my address matches, all your information is correct. Secondly, I'd check all the accounts, make sure they're correct. Hey, maybe you're, they're showing a skip payment or a missed payment. Maybe you can contact the lender and, and dispute that. I've seen it done before where uh, people have had a missed payment, a couple missed payments, and they're like, I didn't realize that was there. And they'll call the lender and the lender will say, yeah, we made a mistake. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen. Um, Next, you want to check the inquiries that we just talked about. Are, all, are they all mine? Make sure you know who's pulling up your credit. And then you can write, here's a little handy thing. You can put the day of the report if you want to do the, like Paula said, and pull one every four months. That way you're always up to date on your credit. And then if you can find your score, sometimes it's provided by lenders, like regions, you have a credit card with us, it'll show up on your, on the website. So. You may be able to find it under your lenders or pay for it through one of the, the uh, credit bureaus. Next thing is pay on time. I think that's, uh, this is one of the, the, the top parts of your credit report. I think it, Paula showed on her uh, credit donut that uh, that's up to 35% of your credit score. So how can you do that? One way might be to set up automatic payments. Make sure you get your bills paid on time. Um, but also make sure you have the funds available in your account to pay on time, so you, you got to do a little bit of work. Um, next, what you want to do, which is a second largest portion of your credit report, is reduce the amount of debt you owe. Um, sometimes it's easier said than done, but sometimes you got to come up with a plan. And there's a couple plans I, that come to, come to mind. Uh, the first is maybe list your debts from lowest balance to highest balance. Pay the lowest balance off as quick as you can, then apply that, that payment to the next highest balance and so on and so on. The other way is that some people do is list their debts with the highest interest rate first, down the lowest interest rate, and they, they want to get that highest interest rate debt paid off first, which is usually things like credit cards and lines of credit. So pick one of those two ways and do it. All right. Now for some tips on either maintaining. I know some of you have some really good scores out there, but you got to work to maintain, maintain them or to help if you have some blemishes on your credit. So first is payment history tips. And they're right there, second section on this page. So it goes without saying, pay your bills on time. That's your number one component of credit reports. And if you have missed a payment, get current and stay current. Um, I said easier said than done, but once you get behind, if you do get caught up and stay caught up, it will improve your credit over time. Um, next, be aware that paying off collection will not remove it from your credit report. Um, it'll stay on there for seven years, but you do need to go ahead and pay it off. Uh, make sure when you do, you get a letter from the company and have them send it to you and the credit bureaus to make sure it's removed or it says zero balance on there. And fourth, in this section, if you are having trouble making ends meet, contact your creditors or credit counselor. I'm going to go over credit counselors a little bit later, but make sure uh, you contact your creditors. If you're having trouble, if you've had a situation arise where you can't make your payments, um, they may be able to work with you. I know with us, you have, you know, we have a department that handles people that have, have issues. We have a 1-800 number they can call, they can talk through it. Uh, the lenders may be, be able to offer uh, forbearance. They may be able to reduce your payments temporarily. They may be able to let you skip a payment. I mean, there's ways they can work with you, but m make sure you call as soon as possible. Don't get, when you get too far behind, it's, it's too late. So if you know you're having issues, make sure you call your creditor or lender and see if they can do something for you. Okay. Um, next, on to amount, amounts owed tips. Keep your revolving credit balances low. I believe Paula covered this, you know, they look at not utilizing all your credit. If you have a $10,000 credit limit, sometimes you have to use it, but try to keep it, you know, 50%, 40%, 30%, 30%. Use it responsibly because this is a, another, amounts owed can heavily affect your credit score. So try to keep them down. Um, the next two sort of go together. Don't pay it, move it and don't close credit cards. So, 
what this means is uh, some, yeah, some people just keep moving, moving, moving their credit to new cards. Uh, try to have a plan to pay it off. Um, you want to get your debt down because that'll have a big effect on your credit score. And your credit score. And closing cards, too many of them at once, will raise your debt limit, raise your debt up. So it'll look like you owe more against fewer accounts than you should. So be careful of closing cards. And don't open new credit cards just to have more credit available if you don't need it. Uh, this could actually hurt your credit, uh, sort of a reverse thing, because you'll have, these are new accounts, and that new accounts weigh on how, how long length of accounts you've had open in the long run. There's some more tips down at the bottom. I'll go over them quickly. Uh, new credit tips. This is for people with newer credit. Do your rate shopping for a given loan within a focused period of time. If you're looking at a car, don't take three months and go shop rates. Get it done in a, in a week, a two weeks, three week period. You sort of know what the rates are going to be. If they see you're you know, looking for a car for six months, they see all these credit uh, inquiries on there, they're going to think you're out there looking for a bunch of loans. So it may affect your score. Um, next, reestablish your cre credit history if you've had a problem. It's tough sometimes, but if you get caught up and stay caught up, your credit will improve over time. And note that it is OK to request and check your own credit report. You can check it for free every year. You can, if you wanted to, every month have it sent to you if you wanted to pay for that. But it will not affect your credit in any way. And then types of credit to use. You can apply and open new credit accounts only as needed. Um, I mentioned that before. Opening a bunch of accounts will lower the length of your credit, the average age of your credit report or credit history, which will have a negative effect on your credit. Having credit cards is fine. We all have, I have one, I have two, but managing them responsibly is important also. Um, and note that when you close an account, it does not go away. It'll stay on your, I think I've got one on my uh, original credit card. It's been there, I think, about 30 years. Like Paul, I got one uh, my freshman year in college. They were handing them out like candy. I was just lucky I didn't take more than one. So to summarize what your handout's reminding you, improving your credit score is about changing errors in your credit history, if they exist, and then following the guidelines above to maintain consistent, good credit history. Sure, it takes a little bit of time and money management, but you all can do it. I've seen people do it many times. All right. So I talked about credit counseling agencies earlier. I want to mention them briefly. Uh, credit counseling agencies, uh, they will help you if you don't think you can handle it. If you got, got yourself in a deep hole, you think you can't dig out by yourself, there's credit counseling agencies available out there. Uh, the Federal Trade Commission recommends these three tips if you're going to use them. Uh, interview several companies before signing a contract. Be sure they're reputable. You can check with a Better Business Bureau or there's other websites online. You can check their ratings to make sure they're reputable. And three, ask questions up front about, hey, what are you, what are you gonna do for me? What fees are you gonna charge? Because they do charge fees, but they do provide a service. And what's, how's the repayment plan gonna work? And how's it gonna help me? And they will send you, the reputable ones will send you information and give you uh, usually stuff on the internet, references that you can check into. So that is an option that is available. All right. So now it's, yes ma'am. Oh, <laughs> Shelly wants me to let you all know that the city of Hendersonville's EAP does offer free credit counseling, am I correct? Okay, so that's something great. A lot of companies are doing that now, so that's a great service. Uh, if you feel you need it, you can just, I'm sure you can look on the internet and find it and give them a call confidentially. Okay. Thank you, Shelly. All right. Now we've gone over all the tips. We've uh, looked at everything. We've uh, learned some stuff about credit reports and uh, our credit score. So now it's time to put, put, put what we know into action, the most important part. Take your next step. And I know some of you out there have probably perfect credit. Uh, you might not need much help in these areas, but 
you can take what you've learned, maybe pass it on to your kids, your grandchildren, your friend, somebody you know. Help yourself maintain it yourself. So knowledge is power, so, and when you, when you put things in action, it allows you to take charge of your credit. So on the handout, you might not be able to do it today, you might have to go back to work, but when you can, circle, check mark, uh, highlight three items on here that you're going to do by the, by the end of the month. Got about two weeks left. And then circle one that you're going to do as quickly as possible. Maybe, may, maybe make it a goal to say, hey, I got good credit or my credit's lacking. I need to you know, see what's going on with my credit report. I mean, go ahead and pull your credit report. It's easy. I mean, it only takes a, a few minutes. Get started on that. That's probably the first step I'd recommend, and there's many in here. All right. So this concludes our Tate portion of the uh, seminar.